Stuart, thanks for this exclusive interview. Can you tell us why you're giving citizens media a, an exclusive interview and not speaking to the state media? Well, Jersey's uh, mainstream media, as we know, don't report the truth. They won't report the evidence even when they're given it on a plate. So many examples of documentary evidence have been handed to Jersey's mainstream media in the last few years concerning all kinds of serious cover-ups of failure and criminality in the public sector in Jersey. The mainstream media won't report it because they're in the pocket of the local oligarchy. So the only way we can get the facts and the evidence and the real case across is by using citizens media. Deputies, and Trevor, deputies Trevor and Shona Pittman have basically said the same of what you just said there, so there seems to be a growing trend here. Well, it, it's clearly the trend around the world. I mean, obviously, this is frightening to governments and traditional establishments of every stripe all the way around the world. The traditional elites, no matter which side they are, all are frightened around the world of citizens' media now. They're trying to control what the public say, because now, because of the internet, the public have got the means to communicate and publish the truth, and governments around the world don't like that. OK. Uh, let's get in. You've just been re released from another two months in prison. You've been described as a political prisoner, a conspiracy theorist, uh, a prisoner of conscience, a, a pain in the, in, in the neck. What, what describes you better out of those descriptions? I'm, I'm a political prisoner, and that's clearly so, because what the Jersey government, the Jersey authorities are trying to do is to silence not only me, by example, but to silence other uh, citizens' media journalists as well. And basically, uh, the actions taken against me are, in reality, actions by Jersey's government, by the state. It is, after all, the state that is paying for this. And the state is doing this against me, using proxy individuals. The state is doing this against me to try and protect itself from having many of its failures uh, in its crimes and the crimes by state employees covered up. Let's be clear about this. Jersey has had a failed and dysfunctional prosecution system, a politicised prosecution system, for many, many decades, probably centuries even. The result of that is that all kinds of crimes of different types have been covered up for decades when they really should have been prosecuted. What is happening now? as we've seen in the last few years with the child abuse cover-ups and very serious issues concerning nursing in the general hospital and other very serious crimes such as rape. These are now starting to be exposed by people like me, independent journalists, citizens media, and this is terrifying to the Jersey establishment. It strikes at the very heart of the credibility, the reputation of what passes for a prosecution system in Jersey and what passes for a judiciary. So this system is striking against me to try and stop me from publishing the truth about this failed system. So in that sense, I'm a political prisoner. And certainly you can see that I'm a political prisoner when you compare the Jersey situation, say, to that which exists in Putin's Russia. Now clearly there are all kinds of problems in Putin's Russia with a politicised judicial system. But even there, at least the judges are fully independent from the legislature and the judges are not actually directly conflicted parties. And in Putin's Russia, you don't have directly conflicted individuals choosing their own judges to hear these cases against people like protesters and dissidents and so on. So in that sense, actually Putin's Russia is better than Jersey because in Jersey, we do have conflicted judges. We do have directly conflicted people choosing their judges to hear these cases. And we have conflicted individuals running these cases against me. So the judicial system in Jersey is overtly a politicised entity. Well, I mean, the official reason why I'm in prison is contempt of court. But there's the official reason, and then there's the real reason. And to take one of the real reasons as to why I've been in prison, you can turn the clock back to 1990. Then the then Education Department reluctantly, through an, an internal, secret internal review, faced up to the fact that for the best part of a decade, uh, two of their employees had been subjecting a number of very vulnerable children to a regime of the most appalling and savage child abuse. abuse Jane. Jane and Alan Maguire in the Blanche Pierre Children's Group Home. So for the best part of a decade throughout the 1980s, uh, these states of Jersey employees were subjecting uh, a range of vulnerable children to a regime of the most horrifying 
and scandalous child abuse of every conceivable appalling description. Now, this went on for the best part of a decade and throughout most of that time Jersey's public authorities were fully aware of it but they let it continue. It got too much to carry on covering up by to, or it got too much to allow to carry on to continue by 1990. So then an internal review was carried out and basically they decided that well yes this abuse had been taking place but well let's not worry about it we'll sort it out now we'll stop it happening now and the one of the key abusers Jane Maguire will just come and work in our family development centre instead. Now this was a grotesque and appalling episode of crime that had gone on for decades against vulnerable children. It was also a criminal activity by the education department itself because they were conspiring to pervert the course of justice in covering it up and the individual senior staff members who let all this continue and covered it up were also breaking the law. They were engaging in uh, misconduct in a public office. So in 1990, the education department should have been prosecuted and those abusers, Jane and Alan McGuire, should have been prosecuted. The then advisor, legal advisor to the education department was the then attorney general, one Philip Balash. He not only colluded with the education department in helping to keep this atrocious episode secret, uh, he also didn't see that the matter was even referred to the police. So the police had no knowledge of this. I'm sure the now Senator Philip Balash will strenuously deny this. I think it's, we should put this on, on record. He's not here to, to defend these allegations. Well, these issues have been spoken about in the States and in uh, uh, citizens' media for a number of years now, and he's never denied them so far. But yes, perhaps you're right. Perhaps he will attempt to deny them. You know, we, we'll see. But that was the case. The then Attorney General, the prosecution authority in Jersey, had the responsibility for seeing that the abusers were prosecuted and, frankly, that the Education Department should have been prosecuted too. That didn't happen. The police only found out about the abuse by accident eight years later, in 1998, and the police of their own initiative brought some charges against Jane and Alan Maguire. This, of course, would have been a disastrous scenario for Jersey's prosecution system because the full atrocious range of the horrifying abuse would have come out in open court and all kinds of very serious questions would have been asked about why it had taken eight years for this to be exposed, why it had taken eight years to achieve justice. This would have been devastating to the Office of Attorney General and to the then post holder. So, in 1998, the then Attorney General, Michael Burt, currently the present bailiff, pulled the plug on the prosecution of Jane and Alan Maguire halfway through. Still, the victims didn't get any kind of justice at all. Then they were assigned a legal aid firm a firm of lawyers to represent the victims as legal aid clients. That firm was Balash Lebes in 1998. The senior partner of it was then Philip Balash's brother, William Balash. The victims were completely betrayed. Not only did their attackers not get criminally prosecuted fully, the victims didn't even get any civil compensation at all. Roll the clock forward, all these issues get exposed again. People like me uncover them in 2007. The police get involved. 2008, the police have clearly discovered that all this abuse was covered up. They want to extradite the Maguires back from France, have them fully prosecuted, and the police are looking into how all of the stuff was covered up from 1990 in 1998 for the best part of you know two decades. These crimes were concealed. Now, people like me have got all this evidence. We know what this truth was. We know that this grotesque failure by Jersey's prosecution and judicial system happened. We know that these victims had their lives ruined and they didn't get any justice. We know that the system covered it up. I'm publishing this kind of evidence. I'm naming names. I am publishing, as a citizen's journalist, the evidence for this kind of disgusting cover-up engaged in by Jersey's authorities. Now this is catastrophic and disastrous to the reputation of the Jersey establishment. So they want to oppress me to stop me from publishing this material and they want to make an example of me to stop other bloggers publishing evidence too. Okay, so 
what is what do you think the implication of this judge made law against you uh, is going to have for the um, committee of inquiry the child abuse committee of inquiry and the upcoming elections you've got some thoughts on that haven't you well the position that the jersey establishment have put themselves in here is it's a very very fascinating it's an interesting position so even by their own admission the kind of case law they've established so far against me, judge-made law, um, has no parallel, no equivalent, in any other country in the world, anywhere. There is no other country, even in third world regimes, that applies supposed data protection law in the way that the Jersey authorities are doing it. It's, it's unique. And it's obviously nonsense. It has no real basis in law. They're only doing this because they can. They are the judiciary, basically. But the implications of what they've done and what they're trying to do against me by establishing this kind of further examples of judge-made law against me, they're doing this because they want to make sure that things like their committee of inquiry will be even more of a sham than it's going to be already. They want to equip, basically, the committee of inquiry with a ready-made excuse for it not taking all kinds of serious evidence in public. They want to make sure that uh, people like culpable civil servants, those who have engaged in the cover-ups, those who have furthered the cover-ups, people who have done all kinds of corrupt things, actual abusers themselves, they want to give the Committee of Inquiry an excuse to keep all of that kind of stuff heard in secret only and not to have these people answer the case against them in public. They want their identities protected. They want to keep all of the real evidence out of the public domain and not published in the final reports. So in order to basically give that kind of uh, excuse to the Committee of Inquiry for secrecy, they need to establish this kind of judge-made law against me. So they can then say, oh look, here's this case law that's just happened in the Jersey courts, which says that actually the data protection law is so uh, all-encompassing, it can basically enable all kinds of culpable individuals, even overt criminals, to have their identity completely hidden from any kind of public scrutiny. So, oh dear, what a shame, our Committee of Inquiry can't deal with all of this stuff in public. So that's clearly what they're going to do, and that's why they pursued this case against me. Also, in the more broader sense for political discussion in general, the case law they've established against me basically means that Jersey cannot have free and fair elections. An intrinsic fundamental component of a free and fair election is that the candidates and the public are able to talk about the real issues, issues of genuine public importance. Now, obviously, things like grotesque failures, incompetence, inefficiency in the public sector, indeed, criminality, conspiracies to pervert justice, corruption, fraud, covering up crime, actual crimes by public employees. These are issues which are bad, but they're the meat and drink of election processes. These are the kind of things that candidates talk about, argue about, put to the public. The public put these issues to their candidates during elections. Thus it is that the democratic process, the election process, is core and foundation to the very rule of law. It's the ultimate safeguard by which the public can protect themselves by ensuring that these issues get ventilated at election time and the public can elect people who are going to properly uphold the rule of law and make sure indeed that the state and the government and the apparatus of the state are properly held to account. But of course, if in Jersey, uniquely in the Western democratic world, there's a prior constraint, a ban upon candidates and indeed the public from talking about the evidenced criminality, evidence failures, evidenced corruption in the public sector, then that whole issue, that whole fundamental topic, how do the public hold to account their government, how do the public make sure that their government is acting honestly and competently and not being corrupt, that whole fundamental topic is taken out of play completely, out of the electoral process in Jersey. And of course, if you take that fundamental issue, the accountability of the state and those who work within it, out of open discourse in an election, then the election you are left with is not a real election. It's a fake, 
it's a sham, it's merely a piece of window dressing because the election and the people involved in it will not be able to openly and publicly talk about the real issues. Yes. So this is, this is what the Jersey oligarchy, our, our crypto feudal traditional mafia have done and what they're seeking to do through this case law against me. They want to stop me and others like me talking about their corruptions and their failures during elections. They want to deprive the Jersey voting public of the power to receive this knowledge and to make their informed choices. And then we get to what now? Uh, they're going to keep imprisoning you. And the offending articles on the internet of the four proxies are going to remain on the internet. So it looks like you're going to spend the rest of your life in prison and the offending articles are going to spend the rest of life on the internet. Who wins? Who's the winner here? Well, it's not an ideal victory, but um, it's only a partial victory. But um, the, the winner is the Jersey public because they're able to uh, get to see the evidence that I've published and that other citizens, media journalists are publishing. And in addition to that, they've also got to see the true nature of the Jersey oligarchy, the Jersey establishment, which is oppressive, uh, not a real democracy. It's got corruption written through it. Uh, there's all kinds of corruption and crimes in Jersey's public sector which these people are desperate to cover up. So in that sense, we're not there fully yet, but certainly there's a lot of evidence, a lot of information now that the voting public in Jersey are aware of, and they can start to see the truth about what Jersey's government really is like. Um, in terms of the ultimate losers in all of this, of course it's the Jersey establishment. I mean, uh, all kinds of regimes around the world have learned the hard way that you can't now silence uh, the citizens. We have the internet now. This is the age of citizens' media. Frankly, all the stuff I've published, even if I were to take it off of my blog now, it's all up on other blogs anyway, so there's no prospect of them ever getting removed from the internet. The four proxy individuals who the state are attempting to hide behind, hide behind the fact this is actually the state oppressing me, they've been named twice now in the House of Commons. That's a permanent record on Hansard. So the genie is out of the bottle, and there's no way it's ever going to be got back in. Basically, citizens, media, journalists can publish this material. I can publish it and I'm going to carry on publishing it. But even if I didn't, other people will and other websites and other countries will carry on publishing it. So it was always going to be a futile uh, exercise as far as trying to keep the truth hidden was concerned. And when the Jersey establishment first decided to embark upon this ridiculous, oppressive activity you know, back in you know, 2008 and 2009, things like massed, you know, illegal police raids conducted without a search warrant against the most prominent opposition member of the legislature. It was just, it was obviously ridiculous then, and it's just become even more ridiculous as time goes on. And indeed, it's a very high stakes, a high risk uh, game they've played because there has been so much judicial corruption, a stark, overt, undisguisable judicial corruption in the conduct over these years against me, that it's a now very, very serious problem for the Jersey authorities. I guess they're going to carry on trying to force me to take the stuff off the internet, which would be futile anyway, but I'm not going to obey their uh, orders, so they'll put me in prison again and carry on doing so, I imagine. They'll probably up, up in the sentence, I guess, as, as the case has gone. So yes, this could go on for, for years, as far as I'm concerned. Um, in terms of my legal response, Obviously, it's always going to be the case and always was going to be the case that ultimately uh, the conduct of the Jersey authorities, the clearly unlawful conduct, is a, a, a failing of the authorities in London. So ultimately, it's always going to uh, end up there. In terms of the immediate Jersey legal response um, I'm making, I'm, I've written and I'm going to file very soon a claim for unlawful imprisonment uh, against the relevant authorities in Jersey. And it's going to be a most interesting uh, court case and well worth observing, I would have thought, because um, uh, all kinds of evidence and uh, information is going to be in that case. And uh, actually, it's a case against the judicial function itself. Uh, clearly, the actor, the main actor against me, and clearly an interested party, when you look at the conducts of the various bailiffs and deputy bailiffs over the years, and the fact that their conducts as attorney general the kind of things I've been exposing. Obviously, the Jersey judicial function 
the Crown officers are in reality the main agent against me, the main party against me. So I'm basically taking a, a legal claim for unlawful imprisonment on the grounds of confliction and conflict of interest uh, against the Jersey judicial function. So it's going to be a, a very interesting uh, little uh, case to see how that plays out. Clearly, you know, me and others like me have got no chance of ever winning anything in any court in Jersey because Jersey's judiciary is a politicised entity. But it's going to be entertaining, I think, nevertheless. And any idea when this will be happening, this court case? Well, I've got it virtually completed now. I spent, uh, you know, what little time I had to access a word processor in prison. I've uh, written most of it in prison and uh, I'll probably have that completed over this weekend. I'll get it filed in court uh, sometime next week. I say I'll get it filed in court. Um, that assumes, of course, that the directly conflicted parties, people like Michael Burt and William Balash and Julian Clyde-Smith, don't in fact actually veto uh, this action from going to court, which they have done in the past with several of my legal actions. I've not even been able to get them in court. This is how you know, politicised the structure is. But yeah, I'll be trying to file this action next week. Well, we look forward to the outcome of that. Yeah, um, and you know, whilst all this may seem like a long and complicated and tortuous kind of path that's unfolded over these years, uh, we need to always remember and never lose sight of the real issues here. The real issue, ultimately, is that uh, a group, a large group of young, very vulnerable children had their lives wrecked for the best part of a decade of the most savage and disgusting child abuse in the 1980s that the Jersey authorities were aware of and they covered it up. They covered it up not once, not twice, but three times. And this oppression conducted against me is in many ways merely the latest futile and despicable phase of that cover-up. But sooner or later, there's going to be a reckoning over the Blanche Pierre atrocity and the way disgusting criminals like Jane and Alan Maguire were able to get away with it.